Folder by type is the most common architecture in Vue projects. It is easy, straightforward, and comes by default with every Vue app created using Vue CLI. With this type of architecture, you separate your files by types. For instance, you store your components, store, routes, utils, and etc. in their corresponding folders. This is actually a decent architecture for small projects, but as your app grows, you quickly notice that it becomes harder to navigate, especially when you are focused and working on a specific feature. Let's say you have three features in your app, which are the cart, products, and user. And currently you are working on products, so you have to jump between several folders that we talked earlier and find the files that correspond to that feature. This becomes really unmanageable when your project gets more and more features added and you will end up with bloated components, routes, and store folders. So is there a better architecture? And the answer is yes. In this scenario, we can make use of folder by feature or in other words, the modular architecture where you put all of your files related to a specific feature into its own folder. With this kind of architecture, it is going to be very easy to work on separate features in isolation because you know that in this folder, you will have files that are related to that feature only. You can notice that this architecture actually copies the root source directory structure, but it holds only the feature related files. Inside each module folder, you have all the freedom to create any structure that you want as long as you expose common module interface for registering its Vuex store module and routes. Now, what do I mean by a common module interface? Is that the index.js of your module folders should export a similar object like this, for example, where you export store and router if there is one, which then are going to be registered in your main.js on your global store and router. Not all modules need to have both the routes and store at the same time. It's totally optional. You might have a module which exposes just a store in a component that makes use of that store. That is actually fine. In theory, this is all to it about modular architecture. Now, let me show you an example view project that I have set up behind the scenes using this architecture. Now let's first take a look at the example project, which is a very simple online store web app that has two main features in this case, which are the products and the cart. The products is a basic page where we list our products. We can view each item in detail by clicking on the view button, which takes us to product slash ID page. We can also add and remove items from the cart. The cart itself has its own page where we can view all items that are added as well as remove them. Finally, here we are in the project source code. It's a basic Vue CLI project that is set up with Vue Router and Vue X. Here what is interesting for us is the modules folder where we basically store all the modules. You can call this folder however you want, it doesn't matter. Inside the folder, as you can see, we have two folders that correspond to the features we saw in the example. We're gonna take a look at products module first. We have four items here. Uh, first is the views folder, which holds all the pages related to this module. Next up, we have the index.js that will export our module using the common format that we saw in the introduction. Then we have the module.view component, which is going to be the entry route component through which all other pages will go. We will take a closer look at that in a moment. And lastly, we have the router.js file, which contains the route definitions for our module. Index.js is a simple file, which in this case imports the router and right away exports it inside an object. So this is basically our format. We have an object that should be exported by default that will contain the router, store, or both if available. Let's check out how the router file looks like. If we go from top to bottom, first we are importing the module component as well as two pages that this module has. Then further down, we are creating a single route definition that is going to be the entry route to our products module. So we are saying whenever user enters the products route, 
we want to show the module component. And this component is going to be responsible for rendering all the child routes under slash products. Now under children, we have two routes, which are the slash, that is same as slash product in this case, and the ID, which is the product view page that will correspond to slash product slash ID in the URL. Now, how these routes are going to be registered on the main view router instance? At the bottom, we are exporting a default function that we will be calling upon registering our module. It takes a view router as a parameter then inside we are making use of view routers add routes method that as the name suggests adds new route entries in this case we are only passing our module route which takes care of everything what is neat here is that we can use any view router api inside this function knowing the fact that we are getting a full router instance as a parameter now what about this module.view component that we are rendering in the first place before any other routes this component basically renders a nested router view, so all of the subroute components will be rendered here. And now you might be thinking why we need this dump wrapper route with nested children if we can declare two independent routes like this. Then we won't even need the module wrapper component with the nested router view. We do that because we might want to do some kind of bootstrapping here. For example, do an API call using Vuex store action whose resulting data might be reused across the module's pages and components. And even nicer, you can conditionally render this inner router view and show it only when, for example, your data is fully fetched, else you can show some loading UI. Also, this is helpful in the router part as well, because you might want to set up a navigation guard that you want to fire every time the user enters this route or the subroute else we would have to duplicate the navigation guard for each route. The views folder holds all the page components that we were importing in the router. And I won't be going over their implementation, it's out of scope of this video. But later we will return to these components when we will be looking at the cart module because these components are making use of it when adding and removing items from the cart. Let's continue with the cart module. I won't be going over this module in depth because the structure is exactly the same. And you can examine the project anyways because I will be linking the source code under the lecture so you can download it and check out how it's actually implemented. The only difference here is that we have a store associated with this module. It is used to hold all the items in our cart. So inside index.js, now we are exporting module with both store and the router. Nothing fancy here. In the router, we have a single entry, which is the home page of the cart module, which lists all the items in the cart. The module component is exactly the same as in the products. And the store itself is a very basic Vuex module and it should be namespaced because we want our module to be encapsulated and accessed through that namespace explicitly. And the rest of the files are logic related to Vuex only, nothing special here. You can have any structure you like. Going back to the home page of the products for a second, where we render the product cards, here we have two buttons that add and remove item from the cart. And in order to access the cart's Vuex module, we basically make use of the namespace access that is available in Vuex by default. Nothing new here. And the same thing here, we access the cart items through the cart namespace. So now with these modules in place, how are we going to register them in our view application? For that, we have a simple utility called register modules. What it basically does is register the store and router of a module on the global view router and view X. That is why here we import them in the first place. Now the first private function we have here is the register module, which accepts a name and a module, which in our case is a format that we are exporting from the index.js of our modules. So inside we are first checking if we have a store associated with our module and if there is one, we register it with Vuex stores method called register module, passing in the name of the module and then the module.store. Then we check for a router and if there is one, 
we call it as a function with the global router passed in as a parameter. Knowing the fact that the router of a module in our case is a simple function. Further down, we are exporting one function that is register modules, which accepts an object with our modules. In this case, the key is going to be the name and the value is our module object. Then what we do inside is first get the keys from the modules using the object.keys method. And right away, we are iterating over that array, getting the module key. And inside the body of that function, we first get the actual module from the modules object using the key that we've got here. And then call the register module function that we have declared above, passing down the module key as the name and the module itself. Then in our main JS, which is the entry point to our application, we import our modules, which are the cart and products as well as our register modules utility function and calling it, passing down the object that I described earlier. So the modular architecture is amazing and does really well when it comes to larger application where multiple developers might be involved. It gives a clear isolation and each team can work on their module independently, for example. And note that this implementation is not one and only bulletproof solution to modular architecture. There are different ways of approaching the same thing. But my job in this video was to explain the core concepts and benefits of using such an architecture.